Mic check, one, two. Can you get the slurp? Ah. Tea actually tastes better the louder you slurp it. Anyway, I'll put this down here and get started. <coughs> Yo, what up everybody? Now in this video, I'm gonna break down the differences between seat harnesses and waist harnesses. Please hit the subscribe button, it really, really does help. I know everyone bangs on about it, but it does actually help. So enough of that rubbish, let's get into it. So let me explain why I've taken so much interest in seat harnesses. At the start of the year, I damaged my rib. I broke a rib right before the king of the air, doing a double front roll mega loop. Slight piloting error, I came in on my side and just smashed my ribs, hairline fracture and damaged the cartilage in between my rib and my sternum. So I couldn't compete, I had two months off, started kiting again, I had one nasty crash and I was back to square one. They said wait, basically. So I waited longer, again, same thing happened again. Now this takes me through right to the summer. A couple of brands gave me seat harnesses. I got both the shorts and the standard seat harness. And since then, I've been wearing it flat out. I've been wearing the shorts when I'm in hotter countries, and I've been wearing a standard seat harness in a wetsuit. So there's the backstory as to why I've been testing them so much. Now let me explain the differences between the two. The main difference between a seat harness and a waist harness is the straps that go around your legs. So let's get into the seat harness. So as you can see, oh blimey, just lost a harness. As you can see, these straps wrap around your leg and it completely changes the angle of pull. Normally a waist harness sits around your waist and the pull is about where your belly button is. Whereas a seat harness is much lower. It's about where my, my willy is, basically. I'm going to say it. That sounds really weird. Can I say that on YouTube? I think so. Now, I've been testing both of these harnesses extensively. I personally prefer using the shorts if I'm not wearing a wetsuit because you don't need to wear shorts. It looks like a normal harness. It just looks like you're wearing shorts. There's a lot of padding in there and I found it really comfy. And I actually even wore it with a t-shirt. You could barely see that I was wearing a seat harness. I think half the problem with people wearing seat harness is it looks like you're wearing a nappy. Especially if you're a bloke and you've got big balls like me. Then I've been wearing this harness in a wetsuit. I've been wearing it foiling a lot. Again, I've been foiling more because I've been worried about my rib taking a bare crash. And I've actually discovered that a lot of the top foilers are actually wearing just seat harnesses. The main advantage I've found in wearing a seat harness is you're able to hold down much more power. So in stronger wind conditions, when I'm overpowered, I can really sit into the harness. So I can sit all my weight and my bum against the kite. Whereas with a waist harness, it does pull up and pull into your ribs. It's harder to keep your center of gravity lower. With a seat harness, it's much easier to keep your center of gravity lower. But the disadvantage are, it's not as comfy and it restricts your movement. I've even worn these harnesses doing big air. Now, with big air, it was very different because it completely changes my center of gravity. When I'm trying late back rolls, front rolls, doing kite loops, I was pretty scared doing it in a seat harness and I found I had to commit more to rotations. With the waist harness, I had more freedom to land. It was easier to land and also do rotations. Maybe, just maybe, big air in the future might come back around to seat harnesses. The main reason being it's much, much easier to hold down power. Out of these two harnesses, I would definitely choose this one with the shorts in hot weather when I'm not wearing a wetsuit, and I would choose this one if I'm wearing a wetsuit and I'm not wearing shorts. So here we have two waist harnesses. The latest hard shell ride engine and an older soft shell Dukine. Now you can see the different kind of supports that you're going to be getting from these harnesses. This is going to be squashing your back and not providing as much support. Now this is my ride engine harness. If my rib was okay, I would be using this harness for all freestyle. So let's put it on and show you how well it fits. In fact, I think I could wear both harnesses. In fact, I think I'm going to put on both harnesses, guys. Okay, I've got two harnesses on. But it does give you a good example of where the pulls are different. Now this is much, much lower. 
but I can really sit into that power. This is much higher, but it gives me more freedom to move my hips. When your hips and legs are locked into these straps underneath your groin, it really does restrict your movement, but it's much easier to hold down power. With the waist harness, I've got a much more freedom of movement, but the pull is more into my ribs and it's harder to keep that harness down. So, to summarize, I'd really strongly recommend a seat harness for women, children, and beginners. And anyone that is struggling to hold down the power, is struggling to keep the harness down, and I'd recommend a waist harness. If you want a bit more freedom, you don't have any rib problems, you've got wider shoulders, and I'd also definitely recommend a hard shell as well, as they're gonna provide more support than a traditional soft shell. So I think that's about it, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. If you do have any more questions, hit me up in the comments below, and I'll get back to you again. Yeah, cheers. Peace out.